Hey everyone, welcome back here on our 7 days pre-marketing training series. And in this video number 2, ang pag-uusapan natin is all about target market. Tuturo ko sa'yo paano mo ma define what is your perfect target market. Una, pag-uusapan natin is why targeting to everyone with your products or services is a terrible idea. Pangalawa, pag-uusapan din natin how to use the PPB method to select your target market. Pangatlo, why you should focus on a niche and become a big fish in a small pond. Pangapat, pag-usapan din natin is why you should stop advertising a long list or products or services. At panguli, how to go deep into the mind of your prospects so you can understand exactly what they want. When you ask yung mga business owners at tatanungin mo sila, Sir, pwede ko po bang malaman what is your target market? Karimahin ang isasagot sa'yo, my target market is everyone. As much as possible, ang gusto nila is maraming mga, mara, ma-reach nila yung malaking market dun sa services or product na binibenta niya. But in reality, this means to no one. To be successful in your small business, you need to be a laser focus dun sa target market mo. Importante yun. For example, Apple. Why Apple is Apple? Kung familiar ka sa history ng Apple, nag-start siya sa computer. Okay? And then later on, dun niya nilabas yung iPhone. Pero si Apple talagang nag-focus siya dun sa computer na different from Windows. And makikita mo naman yung difference ng dalawang brand from Windows to Apple. Ano yung mataas yung value sa market, ano yung best quality sa dalawang brand na yon. And then, si Apple, hindi agad siya nag-open ng multiple services or products. Nung nilaunch naman si Apple, wala naman niyang uh, Apple Music, wala naman niyang iPhone, iPad, walang ganon. So, nag-focus muna siya sa isang product, and then, iyon ang binilid niya. Okay? So, in-establish niya yung isang product na yon at iyon ang pinampurant niya sa market. And, Mamaya, pag-uusapan din natin paano na yung magiging specific dun sa ating target market. Another one example kung nasa industry ka ng health and beauty. Health and beauty products or mga services man. Health and beauty products is marami yung category and subcategory. So, hindi pwedeng sabihin mo na yung niche market ko is health and beauty products. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Kailangan i-define mo anong, anong category dun sa health, anong category dun sa beauty products yung niche na kailangan mong i-target. Pinaka-basic example lang is kung ikaw is nagpapasalon, kung meron kang businesses na salon, malalaman mo kung ano yung specific market mo. Okay, sa salon, meron yung tinatawag na treatment, meron yung facial massage, or body massage, and so on. So, ngayon, i-define mo ano yung market niche mo sa subcategory ng salon. So, pag nalaman mo example sa Sa salon is more on haircut lang. Okay? So, more on treatment lang. More on facial lang. So, ngayon, dun ka magpo-focus ngayon sa one category. And yung niche na yun, yun yung kailangan mong i-focus sa marketing message mo sa market. Yun dapat yung ipakita mo. Dun ka dapat makilala. Alright? So, another one example para mas maging malino talaga sa'yo is photographer or sa photography. Sa photography, they have so many categories din. Pwedeng wedding photography, kung magpo-photographer ka. Pwedeng portrait photography, pwedeng family photography, pwedeng commercial photography, and so on. Ang gusto ko lang maintindihan mo is targeting a tight niche allow you to become a big fish in a small pond. Dominate a niche, take note on that, dominate mo yung niche na yon. then once you own it at na-dominate mo na yung niche na yon sa, sa ating example sa photography, for example, yung ating uh, wedding or yung family portrait photography, i-dominate mo yung niche na yon. So, once you own it na, you can open yung mga sub-niche. Malaking bagay yung ma-define mo yung kung ano yung talagang niche market. So, sabi ko nga, dominate a niche, then once you own it, do the same with another and then another. But never do so all at once. Yun ang gusto kong sabihin sa'yo. Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin how to identify or define your target market. So, babalik tayo sa kaibigan natin na si photographer as an example natin kanina. And gagamitin natin yung tinatawag na P, okay, letter P, B, or yung victory, and P na method. So, yung gagamitin natin to identify your target 
market. So una, yung P is yung personal fulfillment. Yung number one, stand for personal fulfillment. Yung B naman is yung value niya dun sa marketplace. Ano yung value niya? And then last is yung P, is yung profitability. There's a formula para makuha natin yung PPB method and gagamitin natin yung example kanina na photography and they have a four categories, wedding, photography, portrait photography, family photography, or commercial photography. So dito sa whiteboard, isusulat natin yung apat na category. So para malaman mo, yung category mo and hindi lang eh magagamit mo yung method na to sa different niche, different market. So as an example na gagawin natin is yung photography market or your niche. So using a P B P method. Okay? Gagawin mo din i-divide mo sa apat. Tapos ililis mo dito yung E B P. Okay? So ganun din sa ano So, depende kung ilang category yung market niche mo. For example, dito sa unang category natin is a wedding. Okay? Sa wedding, ito naman commercial, family, and then portrait. Okay? So, um, wedding, okay, portrait, commercial, and then family. Okay, so inano ko na lang siya si Norcat. So wedding category ng photography, commercial, portrait and family. So ngayon i-define mo, ang gagamitin natin is FPB method. So i-score mo siya 1 to 10. So gagawa ka ng scoring card. So dito sa una is personal fulfillment. Personal fulfillment is how much do you enjoy dealing with this type of customer. Sometimes you work with a pain and B naman is value to the marketplace. How much does the market segment value your work? Are you willing to pay for a lot of your work? So yun yung value na ibibigay mo. And lastly yung B to define is how profitable is the work you do for this market segment. Dito sa wedding photography, sasabihin natin based to sa skills na meron ako as a photographer, sabihin natin photographer ako kahit hindi naman. And sabihin natin sa skills na meron ako dito sa wedding is meron ako skills na 7. Okay? Sa personal fulfillment ko. Personal fulfillment dito rin is personal fulfillment. Gaano ko nag enjoy dun sa part na to? Commercial, nag enjoy ba ako dyan? Sa type ng subcategory ng photography, sabihin natin yes, okay naman. So 8. Dito sa wedding, um, nag-enjoy ako dito, 9. Dito naman sa portrait is, um, okay then, 9. So ngayon, dito naman is yung value. Okay, value to the marketplace. Sa wedding, um, 8. Ang ilalagay ko dyan, dito naman sa commercial is 8. Here is 7 and value is 9. Okay, so makikita mo dito, um, Dalawang nine na ako dito sa family dahil uh, family photography is mas enjoyable para sa akin. Mas mas nag-excel ako dito sa sa type of subcategory ng photography. So wedding is the profitability. Kung wedding ang sisimulan ko na services as a photographer, magkano ba yung profitability na posible kong kitain sa wedding. And alam naman natin, yung mga wedding is a one time yan. Pag nagkanta ka na photography service sa mga wedding, mga 2 hours, 3 hours, tapos na yung event. And approximately, sabi ng mga kakilala ko, ang church nila dyan is mga 20 to 30,000 per event. So, I think profitable to yung wedding. So, mga 9. Uh, okay? Mga 9. And dito naman sa commercial, ito yung pinaka uh, profitable sa lahat. <laughs> So, ilalagay ko dyan din. Alam naman natin, commercial businesses is malaki yung budget nila. Okay? So, dito sa portrait, um, hindi masyado sabihin natin is 7. And here is the family. Um, okay. So, ngayon, ito total mo ngayon yan. Ito total natin kung ilan. So, 7 um, plus 8 plus 9. Okay? So, ngayon, ito total natin para malaman natin yung kanyang sagot. Okay? 7 plus 8 plus 9, okay, 24. Dito tayo sa wedding, 24 ang sagot dyan. Dito naman sa commercial is 8 plus 8 plus 10, 26. 
Okay, lamang si commercial. Um, 9 plus 7 plus 7 equals 23. Dito sa portrait is 23. 23, 24, 26. 9 plus 9 plus 8 equals 26. So, meron tayong tie. Ang tie natin is yung family and then yung commercial. So, ang gagawin mo dyan is pipili ka ngayon. Hindi mo kasi pwedeng pagsabayin. So, para ma-define mo yung target market mo, hindi mo pwedeng pagsabayin yan. Sabi ko nga kanina, own it first kung ano yung uh, una mong sisimulan as a target niche. For example, is family. Doon ka magsisimula. And okay din na simulan yung family dahil yung commercial medyo uh, malaki yung competition. Family, okay din naman dahil uh, maraming mga gusto ng mga photography, maraming mga, maralaki yung market ng family, kumbaga. So dahil marami yung mga may pamilya. Okay, so 26. So ang gagawin ko is next ko to and then ito yung next target niche ko. So family as uh, category ng photography. Okay, so I hope clear sa iyo yung napag-usapan natin about this FPB method. So gagamitin mo yung formula na yon, you can divide by four or different categories. Magiging scorecard yon ng target niche mo. So once na alam mo na yung target niche mo based dito sa ating example, so family photography ang napili natin. Para sa akin, family photography is more enjoyable, more profitable dahil yun nga malaking nga yung market and yung value niya is mataas. Okay? So lahat naman yan is mataas yung value sa market. Pero family market is sobrang laki. So I hope na klarong klaro sa iyo and if you have anything questions about this defining your target market, let me know on the comment below sa video na to. May makikita ka na comment sections. Pwede ka magtanong and Kung marami ka namang natutunan dito sa ating video number 2, let me know then sa comment section. By the way, lagi mong i-check yung email mo dahil doon ko ipapadala yung mga next training natin dito sa 7 days free marketing training series. I hope na marami ka natutunan and magkita-kita tayo sa next video. Once again, targeting to everyone. In reality, this means to no one. Thank you so much. This is Jay. Make today a better than yesterday.